Guys, I want to talk to you today. How do you know if you're with the right woman? And if you're not with one yet, how do you make sure the next woman that you get with is the right one? I work with so many guys in my coaching practice, probably guys like yourself, who come in terrified that if they marry the wrong woman, she's going to destroy their life. I have guys living in complete terror of marrying the wrong woman because all they've heard online, especially red pill circles, is the wrong woman will destroy your life and cast you into a living hell. Now, is that right? Yes, but actually no. These women don't have utter control over your life and death. It's not quite like that. And it's not a complete random crapshoot about is she going to ruin your life at some point? Eh, roll the dice. That's not really how the game goes. Today, I want to show you exactly how to tell if she is going to screw you over in the long run or if you're marrying the right woman. And if you're, again, not with a woman yet, I want to show you how to filter carefully to make sure she's going to be the right one. Now, this information is going to come from my 15 years of training and experience, especially as a licensed marriage and family therapist, and especially now as an attachment coach, where I have worked with thousands and thousands and thousands of women who are looking for love. And some of them were ready and some of them were not. I'm going to show you some of what the inside pieces are when I work with those women and exactly how you can tell if they're going to destroy your life or not. I hate to say it like that, but that is the language most of you are coming in with. Most most women are more scared of you than you are of them, by the way. Just keep that in your mind. But today we are going to talk about exactly how you can tell if she's the right one for you. Now, any resources that I mentioned while we're going through here are available on my website, adamlanesmith.com. You can also email me at support at adamlanesmith.com. You can also drop down into the comment section below and leave all kinds of comments like, Adam, you are completely wrong. Every woman is going to ruin my life. You don't understand what these women are like. They're jungle predators. I get those comments all the time. I understand the fear. I totally get it. I also don't agree with it, but that's okay. That's all. That's a whole other discussion on red pill fighting. And that happens all over my platforms. You've probably seen that but you are welcome to leave me comments. You are welcome to ask questions. Yes, I have been married for 14 years. Yes, I am very happily married and it gets better every year because we do our marriage carefully and right. And I made sure I was marrying the right woman before I jumped into the, into the commitment. So it can happen. I am proof. Yes, I have helped tons of other men. I get their wedding photos. They are very happy. Yes, things can go well when you know what you're supposed to be doing. So why is it important to pick the right woman? Why is it important that you pick the right woman? It's not quite like they describe online, where it's a complete 50-50 coin toss if she is suddenly going to go from sweet and wonderful and kind, and then suddenly she gets pregnant and now she owns your life and she's gonna ruin everything about you and she will enjoy tearing you down as she finds five other boyfriends and destroys you, harvests your organs, sells them on the black market, and keeps you in a cage in her basement while she has wild parties with her 15 new husbands upstairs in her mansion it's not quite going to be like that. Most women are, most women would be disgusted and would probably take their own lives before they got to a point like that. So let's not assume that every single woman on earth has the utter complete incapability of being a human being. Let's step back from that for a moment. No, most women on this earth are not utter sociopaths who enjoy destroying your life. No, most women on this earth are not out there and going to do everything they can to rob you blind. What you're describing and what most red pill circles describe is women with extreme personality disorders and an inability to function as a human being in their relationships. They are describing real predators and those are the kind of women I did treat back when I worked in correctional facilities. I worked with plenty of those women. I know the difference because I've seen the difference. What you need to be looking for is a basic ability to cooperate with you as a human being. We will talk in this video about exactly the signs you need to be looking for. I also have an earlier video about Amber Heard and about personality disorders and some of the big warning signs you could be looking for in women who are going to poop on your bed and destroy your life and drag your reputation in public, check out that earlier video, Avoid the Turd. That's an interesting one. But for now, let's talk about this. Most women are more scared of you than you are of them. Most women I work with who are out there looking for a one committed, loving partner, what they're looking for is a man who they can respect, a man who is stable, a man who is emotional discipline, has a decent career, that she can count on, especially if they're gonna have children together and is mostly either marriage-minded or family-minded and wants that. That's what most women are looking for. And I'm not talking about if she's in her 30, she's 35, she's desperate. The women who come in who are in their early 20s, early 20s are still begging me to show them how to connect to a man who wants to get married and in their early 20s. It's happening. There are a lot of women out there who want that and you just need to find them. And that's the hard part. 
and it's also you attracting them and showing them that you are what they're actually looking for. That's also the hard part. Now, as I talk about extensively in my book, Exhausted Wives, Bewildered Husbands, I am most used to seeing wives come in who have been agonizing inside their bad marriage with a man who is not willing to try. They try over and over and over for five, 10, 15, sometimes even 20 years being overwhelmingly loyal to the same man who mistreats them, who has no care for their emotional intimacy, and just tells them their emotions are stupid. That is the reality that many women are living with. So when people say 70% of divorces are initiated by women, it's not women are going out having fun initiating divorces and saying, oh, this was great. It's, I have been checked out of my marriage for the last two years because it's been 18 years of misery and he's not showed me that he actually cares. And I'm used to working with those men. They only care and only start when the divorce talk starts happening and she is already gone by that point. So the horror stories you hear online are either extreme personality disorders, a very tiny portion of the population, or men who are now angry because they got blindsided after 18, 20 years of comfort and not having to try. That's usually where it starts happening. Women, if you are watching this and this has happened to you, drop down in the comment section and say, yes, that was me. That really does happen. There's a lot of men out there who are not going to believe that this is the case. And they say, no, Adam, you don't get it. It's all these 23 year old women who get married and then just take you for child support for the rest of your life. And they just want the alimony. They are all gold diggers and they're all, yeah, I hear that all the time. I hear that all the time. That's not the case. Look at the research. You'll actually see the real, the real thing. Or get into my position. Do, the, do this work for 15 years like I have and you'll start seeing the signs that nobody else is talking about. Now, I say all of this not to say that men are dumb for having concerns. There are real concerns and there are real challenges. Family courts are horrible. And yes, ugly, vicious attack, vicious custody disputes, divorces, they also happen. It doesn't take a personality disorder to have a bad breakup. It can happen to a lot of people. What you need to check for are a couple key signs that I'm about to show you right now. Number one, guys, ask yourself this. When there's a problem, is she right on the table with it? Does she bring in, does she talk to you about it? Does she say, hey, this is a concern for me. We need to fix this. Does she say, here's a problem. We should address this. Does she say, here's something that's bothering me. Can we work on this? Does she bring you the problems or does she keep silent about them and try to solve them herself? Or does she expect you to read her mind? If she is not being right up front with it, it's probably not going to work because you are going to have to work together during stressful events where you won't have time to read between the lines. You won't have the skills to read between the lines if she's being secretive. And if she's really holding it in, if she's only deciding things herself, it's going to go bad. You guys need to be deciding things as a couple. She needs to be bringing the problems right to you and be able to communicate that clearly. And that shows that she trusts you and it shows that long-term you guys can actually cooperate to solve problems. It also tells you that she's going to solve those problems with you before they become giant explosive problems. You're not looking at 10 years of misery and then sudden divorce. You guys are looking at, okay, here's some discomfort for a couple of months. We haven't figured out how to fix it yet. We get some help, we fix it. So can she solve problems with you and bring problems to you proactively? Or is she secretive or does she expect too much of you without telling you? That's a big, big sign right there. Now, is she realistic or is she all about feelings? If it's endlessly about how she feels and she expects you to perform and make her happy and it's all about feeling good or the relationship's over, really bad sign. Now, is she able to be realistic and say, sometimes feelings are rough. We need to go through those patches, but we also need to get back to a better place. So let's work together to get to a better place. That's a big difference. That is the difference between you are here to entertain me and give me good feelings. And we are a partnership where we are supposed to work on problems. Stress will happen. Let's just keep ourselves pointed in the right direction. A woman is going to need to respect you. And women don't want men who just sit there wallowing in misery without ever solving a problem. Men confuse this all the time with her love for me is so conditional. Well, no, she has expectations of you because she's forming a partnership with you. Would you have expectations of someone if you were forming a partnership for a business? Would you say, I am unconditionally accepting you as my business partner. Nothing you can ever do will ever make me stop being your business partner. Never, ever. No, you would have certain expectations, but you would also work in good faith with them. Same thing applies here. You don't have to be a dancing monkey for the rest of your life, but you do need to make sure that you are acting in good faith and keeping up respect. Be a person worthy of her respect. 
Now, does she prioritize material trappings above everything else, or are material things just one more step in an over our overarching scheme of hers of creating a better life together? My wife, we've been married for 14 years, she definitely looks at our finances and makes sure that they're balanced and sets things aside for the future. We invest together. We, we like seeing the numbers go up. We also have four kids we need to feed. And I don't know if you've checked the grocery store lately, but the meat prices are going up and feeding our kids gets harder. It is important to have a wife who understands the practicality of financial control, of material things, right? She wants to own a home with walls so wolves can't wander in. Yes, that's not being a gold digger. That's not wanting your children eaten by wolves. There's different levels of this. The material pieces should feed into a bigger system that has a bigger purpose than just collect all the money and sit on it like a nest egg. If she's just sitting on a nest getting fat, that's a problem. If she is viewing an, a greater purpose that the material pieces go into, that's good. If she is just sitting there collecting all the money and, and nesting on it, she's probably insecure and views money as the only way to stay safe because she doesn't trust relationships or human beings or even herself. You've got to be the same way. Do you, you view finances as the core of who you are and you only have to give money and you only have to care about how much cash you're making and you only have to care about the car you're driving? Or do you say all of this is for a greater purpose and we're building something else together? So as I talk about inside my attachment bootcamp video course, you need to be living to a greater life purpose. That greater life purpose should be driven by some sort of legacy that you're creating. If she's the right one, she is going to join you on that journey. And you're going to co-create a legacy together. That is the goal of marriage. That's the goal of romance. That's the goal of all of it. And I'm not just talking about biological children. That's the easiest one to look at, but people you mentor, right? A business you build, a cause that you support, children that you adopt. There's all kinds of ways that you can have a legacy and you're co-creating creating that together. That's one of the purposes of actually getting together and committing. What did you think you were committing to? Great feelings? No. You are committing to building a legacy together, a united legacy. My wife and I, united legacy. We are both pulling at the same time in the same direction in different ways. She is in the home helping take care of the kids, raise the kids, educate the kids, also runs our finances. I make the money, I put the money in there. I also make bigger decisions about financial pieces. I come in, I direct, I defer to her on some areas, but I also guide and make sure that I'm not just abdicating my throne. I am making sure that I'm taking care of the system and she's taking care of the system over here. And together we're pulling toward a great united legacy that both of us have agreed in, in advance that we want to build. Does she have that kind of vision with you or is she just here to have good feelings and just, that's it? Where is she looking? Where are you looking? Into the future? or just into the present. And finally, does she fight with you or does she argue with you? These are two very different things. Arguing with you means she has disagreements with you and is airing them and talking through them, but for the sake of building a better relationship, a better future, and so that both of you are understood and you get the best outcome together. That's arguing, it's debating. It is not trying to win against you because she thinks you're an idiot or doesn't trust you or just thinks that you're out to screw her over. Fighting is her trying to win against you and be superior over you and control the direction things are going because she thinks you're wrong, you're stupid, you won't listen, she's winning against you. Is she fighting you or is she just arguing with you? Those are two very different things. And what are you doing? Do you fight with her or do you argue with her and have discussions and pull things and discuss these pieces step by step, pull out facts, talk them through, make sure that you are respecting each other during that conversation. Even if it gets heated, you're still respecting each other and trying to aim for that mutual goal. Are you arguing or fighting? All of these pieces right here, you need to be tracking in your relationship or in your next relationship. If you're not with a girlfriend yet, make sure you're using this information to filter the next one to make sure she's the right one for you. She doesn't have to be perfect. She has to be the right one for you that can actually build a sustainable long-term relationship with you that yes, isn't going to explode and screw you over at midlife so that you have to start all over again and be miserable. That's exactly what you're trying to avoid. The signs I've laid out here should show you that she's capable of working and sustaining in this relationship with you. Now the question is, are you capable of working and sustaining in that relationship long-term as well? A lot of men come into my coaching practice because they're not. They don't know how to do that and they don't know how to show it. You need to learn in the three date method, the first three dates, how to build that compatibility and how to build commitment as well. You need to check that compatibility. Do you know how to do that? Do you know how to use the first year of dating as practice to see what marriage will look like and to put stress on the relationship on purpose? If you don't know that, contact me, drop into the comments, ask me for help. I will teach 
teach you in a couple of coaching sessions exactly how to do that. That is not a problem. Make sure you know the dating process though. I've taught this to dating experts and they now teach it to their own clients. Make sure you know the dating process so that you can take this information I just gave you and turn it into an actual applicable piece in your relationships that leads toward marriage and commitment and safety. So guys, right now, I wanna hear from you. Drop into the comments and let me know. Have you been filtering for these things or do you not think these things are gonna work? Be realistic with me. I know a lot of guys hear these things and say, Adam, you just don't understand the family courts and this system right here and women this and the carousel that. Drop into the comments and let me know. I am not someone who runs away and has to live in a bubble. I will take on your concerns. Let me know. Hit me with those questions. I will give you real answers and we can talk about them. Ladies watching this, I'm sure you're also watching this wanting to know what you're supposed to do. Drop down in the comments and let me know. Is this good criteria or is this wrong criteria? Is this criteria you are living to or are these things you're wanting to learn? Let me know. And by the way, let me know if these are criteria for women you would want in your life as friends versus low drama friends versus the big high drama friends. This criteria I've laid out for men is just as important for you to have low drama friends in your life. Make sure you do that too. And while you're down there commenting, make sure you subscribe because I have so much more information coming to you in the future.